This is just a little sample of what you will see on the inside. The beginning of the religious dance of the muscle man. This is the dance that broke the sultan thermometer. It's it, just the moment there. The big sensation from the inside. Remember I said the big sensation on the inside. The admission is a dime, ten cents, a tenth part of a dollar. And on the inside of the big show, we have Ida from Idaho, the astounding amateur poise, angel face, monument of fascinating femininity. Why, ladies and gentlemen, it is known that this little lady has not seen her feet in the past ten years. Next to her, I wish to call your attention to the little beautiful tattooed lady. Tattooed from the crown of her head to the tip end of her toes with marine pictures. All for the life of her sailor. <laughs> Next, I wish to call your attention to Sterno, the human volcano. He is in constant training for the hereafter. <laughs> the next sensation are the beautiful Siamese twins. For all of this, the admission price, remember, is a dime, ten cents, a tenth part of a dollar. Buy tickets to the right, pass on the inside, for the big show starts immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, gather round a little closer to the platform, please. Uh, a little closer, one and all. And now, gaze upon Hercules. Hercules, the mighty, marvelous, mastodonic model of muscular masculinity. Hercules. And now I have here two steel horseshoes. Two steel horseshoes. I will hand one to Hercules and he will bend it for you. Now watch him closely. It, it's a fake. A fake? Ha <laughs> ha. Suppose you bend it. Watch Cecil bend it. <laughs> if it's a fake, why didn't you bend it? Uh, music. <laughs> Now, do you like it? Now, folks, before the next demonstration, you will have an opportunity to purchase my own books on physical development. Here you are. Here you are. Here you are, good people. Gather on this platform. The next demonstration will take place here. I want now to present Professor Echo, God's gifted genius, the greatest ventriloquist of the age, the man of a hundred golden voices, Professor Echo. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Now, folks, if you'll just gather around a little closer now. Come right in a little closer. That's it. That's fine. That's fine, folks. Well, then, if you'll be real quiet, I'll see if I can get the little boy to say something. Well, how are you today, Tommy? Oh, I'm feeling fine, thank you. Well, that's fine. Now, what are you going to sing for the folks today? She was a butterfly's daughter. Oh, he's going to sing She Was a Butterfly's Daughter. She was a butterfly's daughter. But he was a son of a bee. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you like to hear uh, Sweet Rosie O'Grady? Oh, Sweet Rosie O'Grady. One of the good old-fashioned songs, huh? Well, that's fine. I'm sure the folks would like to hear that. So, all right, let her go, Tommy. Sweet Rosie O'Grady, my sweet little That's very fine, Tommy. That's very fine indeed. And now, ladies and gentlemen. And now he is a sailor. Somebody is a sailor. Here, yeah, what's the matter with you? Well, there's a sailor out there. Where? Oh, yes. He means you, buddy. Oh, I just love sailors. Yeah? Say, I could go for a girl like you myself. Say, don't get fresh with me. Oh, go on. Didn't you just say you love sailors? Hold on there, Dick Noy. Hold on. That is me. That is my noise. Don't get sore. Don't get sore. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. That's okay. It's pretty good, ain't it? Gee, I'll say he is, big boy. Oh. <laughs> and I don't succeed. I don't succeed. Uh, that's about enough for you, Tommy. Well, that ought to be enough for the sailor, too. <laughs> well, friends, that's all there is to life. Just a little laugh, a little tear. Now, if you can make your friends laugh with you, so much the better. 
And here, folks, is the secret of it all. A lifetime of married ways is all for the price of ten cents. A dime, a tenth part of a dollar. Come on, folks, ten cents. Think of it. For ten cents, it can become the life of the party. Here you are. Thank you. Now, anyone else? Ah, oh, thank you, my friend. Don't forget to read it from cover to cover. All for ten cents. There you are, folks. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Anyone else now? Anyone else for ten cents, folks? Think of it. Uh... Lay off that mug of mine or I'll stomp you into the sawdust. Shh, not in front of the boobs. Never mind the boobs. You're going to do that once too often and he'll tear you to pieces. Uh, you mean I'll tear him to pieces? Yeah, you and the Swiss Navy, you dumb cluck. Come on. Well, now, six. Two tickers and a leather. Thirty-six bucks. Never mind, I'll do the counting. You're there, Rosie. Tonight, I'm going to give you a treat. I'm going to get you a nice steak. I mean a real steak. Mushrooms and everything. Mushrooms? Sure. You're such a square guy, Echo. Yeah? I couldn't hold out on you. I'm glad you don't that, Rosie. You know, money you get that way will never do you no good. You're next, Shorty. Come on now, skin your teeth and can that grouch. You've got a lot of nice people coming in here today. Oh, I get a lot of yes. Got more brains than my little finger. All them bones put together. I wouldn't be one of them if I could. Like to poison them all. All right, cold blood, all right. If you have so many brains, stand up and do your stuff. And for heaven's sake, smile. What do you think you're getting paid for? Oh, nuts. Ladies and gentlemen, gather around this platform. And right this way, please, this way, the next demonstration. Introducing Tweedledee, the smallest adult human creature. Tweedledee, 20 pounds, 20 inches, 20 years, the 20th century curiosity. Oh, get a curiosity. Cut that out. Twenty pounds, mostly brains. The Demotest Daddy. You pour him to chill. Can you scratch that thing off your face? You catch cold. <laughs> Shut up, Mom. Say, listen. A mouse, mouse. That's good, that's good. He's been called everything in the world but a mouse. <laughs> I can beat you up, you little mouse. It's a free throw. Here, take this junk and get out of here before the cops come. Beat it. <laughs> Come in with me on this, and I'll make you rich, plenty rich. Now, you see, my plan is so simple, so ridiculous, that it scares you. Well, I don't know. Are you sure? Sure. From tonight on, we disappear. They'll look for the midget, but there won't be no midget. They'll find the fingerprints of the echo, there'll be no echo. It sounds kind of creepy. I like it. It's unholy. 
That's us. The unholy three. Understand, from tonight on, we fade out. There'll be no Hercules, no Tweedledee, no Echo. We just fade out. How'd you like a canary for Christmas? I'd like to have a luncheon. Uh, so would I. Morning, Mrs. Gallagher. Good morning, Rosie. Oh, isn't it cold out? Now, say it's cold. My hands are frozen. You shouldn't mind your hands. You ought to see your red cheeks. Now, Hector. <laughs> Sell any parrots for Grandma this morning? Well, no, no parrots. I sold a canary bird, though. And there's another lady that's going to think over a Maltese cat. Think over a Maltese cat? Well, that's better than thinking under an elephant. Yeah. What? Oh. <laughs> Don't let her tease you, Hector. <laughs> Good morning, Rosie. Hello, Grandma. How do you do? She only teases you because she likes you, Hector. Yeah. Only because I'm kind to all dumb animals. There's one she put over on you, Mrs. Lee oh. Come in, huh? I'll just get home to my soup for you. Yes, yes, yes. Grandma's a nice old lady. Yeah. You know, you're a whole lot like her. Oh, no, I'm not. Well, of course, you know her better than I do. <clears throat> Cold out, isn't it? You know, kid, you're out of place in a joint like this. How'd you happen to take this job anyway? Well, you know, that first day I was in town, I was passing by and I saw the sign and you were standing there by the window, remember? Will you take it from me? There's no future in nursing monkeys or manicuring parrots. Oh, well, say, I'm going to night school, too, you know. I'm studying to be an architect. Well, you better stick to your blueprints, so the first thing you know, you'll be drawing animal crackers. Well, I have to work someplace, and I hate to leave here because, uh, <clears throat> well, on account of the birds and things. You take a tip from me and blow. Why? Do you want me to leave here? Mm-hmm. Just for your own good. Because I think you're a nice kid. That's why. Do you? Oh, say, that's nothing to what I think of you. I wonder. Say, Hector, just what do you think of me? Oh, I... <clears throat> I couldn't tell you in front of all these parrots. <laughs> you're a good old goose. But if you don't stop getting so smart, I won't be able to raise you anymore. <laughs> Oh, Rosie, will you come here, please? All right. Come right in, Rosie. What's the big idea? What's eating you now? You're making a play for that guy. Don't be silly. I like him because he hands me a laugh. Yeah? Well, you keep on and I'll hand you a laugh. You get that? Or you lay off of that guy. Or how would you like a sup in the nose? Oh, cut it out. Nobody's going to beat me up. Oh, why do you always do it? When you know it burns me up. Why? Well, I can't figure you out. One minute you act as if you own me and I was a hunk of dirt, and then, then you pull something that makes me think you almost like me. Now she's sitting around you. Say, listen, if you take that boob off to Hoover I'll, I'll lay some lilies under your chin. Oh, Mama's little baby getting rough. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and I get off of it and keep your face on. You'll think trying to That's enough out of you. Mm. What are you doing to the bitch? I'm going to give him that schoolgirl complexion, but not in the same place. 
Yeah, how would you like to have me suck you one, just for luck? You think it would be lucky? Go on, Hank. Let him have it. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead, you yap. Fight among yourselves and see how long this racket lasts. She's right. Now cut it out. Well, who started it? Ah, oh, shut up. It's probably with you guys if you're just feminist. It doesn't seem as though any of these birds talk. Well, uh, I'll call Mrs. O'Grady. She can make him speak. From now on, you guys are going to do as I tell you, understand? And as for you, don't forget what I told you about that guy in there. If you don't, I'll... Mrs. O'Grady! There's a lady out here who wants to buy a parrot, and I can't make them talk. I'll look into it. You love babies, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you and that guy. Oh. <laughs> Pretty Polly. Pretty Polly. Pretty Polly. Oh, how do you do? Good morning. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I should like to purchase a bird, but none of these speak. Oh, in your head, you old lester. Oh, why did you hear what he said? Oh, I certainly did. You see, this is uh, his name is Admiral Dewey. We just got him from the Chief Captain. Well, I wouldn't want such a rough speaking bird. Mine is a Christian home. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Now, you see, this bird is much more refined. It is. Speak, but you shall not find me. Oh. Why, isn't that a biblical quotation? Oh, yes. You see, this bird used to belong to any simple person. Oh. Oh, Rosie. What? Well, uh, I was just going to say, uh, it's wonderful the way your grandma can make those birds talk. Hector, she could make Coolidge talk. <laughs> How much? A $50. Well, Hector, Herman, Herman, Herman. Give to an earth, sister, give to an earth. <laughs> he has quite a sense of humor, hasn't he? Oh, yes. And now my son-in-law will take the bed if you tell him where you live. Mm. It won't be necessary. My car is just outside. Oh, Mrs. O'Grady. You know, that house where we delivered the parrot yesterday was robbed last night. Oh, isn't that just too bad? Mm-hmm. What a shame. Yes, it is a shame to think such lovely people should be molested. What's the matter? Why, Herman, one of our very best customers was robbed last night. She was such a nice lady, too. Lost four valuable rings. Uh, uh three. I uh, saw so it said in my paper. No? Oh, four, I think. Yes, four rings, a platinum wristwatch, a bracelet. Yes. And over $200 in cash. Why, you... <coughs> oh, here's your cough syrup. That does eat one throat, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Hector, I wish you'd run down to the corner and get the afternoon paper. I want to see what it says. Oh, all right, Mrs. O'Grady. You go along with him, Rosie. But, Grandma... Oh, it's all right. Come along, Rosie. Uh -huh. 
So you're holding out on me, are you, you dirty rat? No, wait a minute. There was an inside pocket in this wallet. I found out just a while ago. I ain't had a chance to tell you. Oh, you ain't? No. But um, I showed it to the midge, didn't I, Treadless? Oh, so you're in on it too, are you? All you did would be no woman. He was going to tell you. Well, how about that extra ring? That was a mistake. There was but only three. Yeah, well, don't you make any more of their mistakes. Do you mean you call me a liar? Well, what do you think? Somebody might slap you down for talking like that, Echo. Yeah, well, it won't be you. Now, let me tell you something. Anytime you guys think you're smart enough to operate alone, you go to it. But you ain't, and you know it. Now, if you want me to string along with you, you're going to shoot on the square because you ain't got brains enough to double-cross me and get away with it. And that goes for you, too. Now, if you try anything like this again, I'll do the slapping down, you understand? Yeah, you and who else? Me and who else? Me and the tape back, who else? Echo, get away from there. What are you doing? Yeah, but two cents are turning loose on you right now. Please, Echo, don't let him out. Don't let him out. Well, why not? Well, what's the matter? you very well, Herman. No, I don't believe he does. Oh, I'll answer it. Mrs. O'Grady's bird store. Oh, yes, Mr. Arlington. Oh, well, just a minute. Mrs. O'Grady, here's another one of those parrots that won't talk. Isn't that funny? It's very well. I'll answer it. There you are. Hello, Mr. Arlington. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'll be right over. Perhaps the bird has psittacosis. No, 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 uh, not halitosis. Have a disease. Yes. Goodbye. <gasps> Perfectly matched rubies, Mr. Arlington, as I told you. They're simply splendid. Beauties, aren't they? The lady from the bird store, Mr. Arlington. Oh, very well. I'll see her. Thank you. How do you do, Mr. Arlington? How do you do, Mrs. Grady? I hope you don't mind my bringing my grandchild. Certainly not. Why, what a fine child she is. Oh, he? Oh. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if I could leave him here. You see, he, he might cry if he saw the... Uh, B-I-R-D. What? Well, of course. Come this way. I've been trying for days and I cannot make him speak. Uh, just step back a little. Perhaps you're frightening the bird. Come, Polly. Speak. Ah! Uh, but she was a butterfly snorting. Well, I declare. Pretty Polly. Oh, you, you must speak gently to them. Softly. Pretty Polly. Pretty Polly, pretty Polly, 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 pretty Polly. Give me bees, give me, give me, give me bees, bees, oh, give me. You like them? I don't blame you. Nice bees. <laughs> uh, baby, want to see pretty bees? Look, 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 nice bees. Oh, no, 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 baby, ma no, no, mustn't bees. touch, baby. There, there, oh, there. Baby, uh, shh, shh, shh. baby not, oh, now, now, now. Give, give me back. Give me back. Give me back. Oh, don't touch. Baby, no. Don't you scare them, baby. No, oh, my... Polly, 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 Polly. Pretty, but the baby's crying. Oh, Sounds like he wants something. Let's go. No. Let, let's go now. Let, let go. You'll break them now. What is it? You, what is it? He has the rubies and he won't let go. I'll get them for you. Oh, please do try. Now, come Certainly come knows good jewelry. No, my bees. Come, just uh, get the bees to Granny. No, get the my bees. To bees. Now, come, come, no. come. Oh. oh, I shall give him mine. Now, come, Willie. Come, take Granny's nice red bead. He's broken it. Oh, 
Yes, of course he has. Now, will you give me those? Shame on you. Now, come on, spit that out. Spit that. There. Gracious. Why, that little rascal tried to swallow them. Oh, please, let me see it. I do hope he hasn't damaged them seriously. Well, that's all right. You can fix it. I suppose I can. Oh, Willie, you're such a bad boy. I'm going to take you home. Now, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Mr. Ogun. That little rascal that swallowed it, we never would have recovered it. Oh, I'd have recovered it all right. <laughs> oh, she means a medic. <laughs> 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 Quite a sense of humor. <laughs> now then. In a pinchman of and try to swallow it. <laughs> if I would be there, I would have swallowed the whole necklace. And Eggers says, the granny's nice right thing. Yes, and in another second he had declared the whole works. Well, if I swallowed it, we'd have one. Sure, we'd have had one. But we couldn't go back now and get the rest of them, could we? That's right. That's the trouble with you guys. You try to think. Say, it's a lot of fun Christmas shopping, isn't it? Yeah. It's wonderful what you can get in a party, friend. Oh, I know one young couple that furnished their whole apartment there. They have two children now. Well, you can't get them at the party, ten. Oh. Be careful with that tree. I hope I didn't wake your grandma. I hope not. If you did, our little party's over. You know, Hector, I never thought I'd get a kick out of this Christmas funk, but I do. Oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Who is it, please? It's me and Hector, Grandma. Well, Rosie, will you come in? All right. <laughs> What's the boob doing out there? Listen to this and laugh your head off. He's out there with a Christmas tree. For little Willie. For him? <laughs> sure, he's got enough toys to choke a whale. <laughs> hey, didn't I tell you to lay off that guy? Oh, don't be so sick. I wasn't with him. I met him on the corner heading for here. At <laughs> first, I thought he was a tree. Never mind the funny stuff. You keep away from him. What is it, Hector? May I bring the tree in now? Oh, um, uh, just a minute. All right. Well, you see what you've done? Uh, he's going to wonder why you can't bring him in here. Oh, let me go out. I'll keep him busy till you get dressed. No, you bring him in here. What do you want him here for? Well, I want to keep an eye on him. Now, you wait for me in the kitchen. You mean you want to keep an eye on Rosie and him? Shut up. I won't shut up. It's what's the matter. He's jealous. What, you little... Wait. He's right. We got to be started. We can't sit around here till we got a corns because you are crazy about this dizzy frail. Say, so you get back in that kitchen. Oh, I don't know whether I will or not. Oh, you're going to battle with me again, huh? No battling at all. I just well, been telling you. get back in that kitchen as I tell you to. All right, all right. You're going to have to be a sore about it. Oh, ain't no friend. <laughs> all right. Bring the boob in with this Christmas tree. And remember, I'll be in the next room. For crying out wet. Don't you forget. Come in, Hector. Was your grandma cross? No, but she wanted to help us. But I hope she'll go back to bed. Oh, so do I. <laughs> Say, this is going to be great, fixing this thing up. Sure. Just, uh, just the two of us. <laughs> Grandma might hear you. Oh, say, I don't care. <laughs> say, it's a lot of fun trimming a Christmas tree, isn't it? Yeah. You know, Hector, I never had a Christmas tree. You didn't? Gosh, didn't you ever help your little brothers and sisters, or, I mean, trim one for them? 
I never had any brothers or sisters. Gee, you must have been lonesome. Oh, heck, Doc. Yes, Mrs. O'Grady? You can go home if you like. Rosie and I will trim the tree. Oh, you go to bed, Mrs. O'Grady. Uh, Rosie and I like doing it. Rosie, you come in here. All right. Oh, Rosie, try to get her to go to bed. I'll try. Now, listen, you've got to get rid of that guy. We're going to do that Arlington job tonight. Say, can I even have Christmas to myself? Christmas Eve is the only time we can do this then job. Then pull it next Christmas Eve. <sighs> Say, don't you think I'm human? And I, you do as I tell you. You listen to me. You pull anything you want tonight, but let me alone. Oh, you. What did you say, Grandma? Nothing, Rosie. But I think you ought to stay in bed, Grandma. What's she saying? Oh, I'm mad at her. She won't go to bed. Oh, gee. Hmm. Him bossing me mean my strength. Oh, Betty, you swear me so. You know you're afraid of him. Who's afraid of who? You're the one that should have been the old woman. There. Have that kind of a gab. Oh, I have. Sarcasm does penetrate the big skulls. Keep still. The bigger the animal is, the less brains it's got. Well, I forgot that goes for guts, too. Elephants are afraid of mice. You're afraid of echo. Maybe you're afraid of me, too. Let's see. Boo! Ah, uh, shut up. I ain't afraid of nobody. Well, if you're not afraid of him, let's go. We'll pull the job ourselves. Now, wait a minute. Sure. Wait. Hesitate. Consider. Do as you're told. I'm disgusted with you, you big monstrosity. You and your strength. Say, this is great. Maybe your grandma won't come out after all, huh? Well, you know, Hector, I... Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Grady. <laughs> Mine, mine, mine. Isn't that a beautiful tree? Well, I'm glad you like it. Uh, won't you sit down? Yes, thank you, Hector. I do like it. But, Hector, don't you think you're going to a great deal of trouble for little Willie? Well, it isn't only for little Willie. <laughs> Mrs. O'Grady, can you keep a secret? Certainly. I'm going to ask Rosie to marry me. I'm not going to give her the ring until tomorrow. Unless I get up nerve enough to ask her tonight. Oh, I'd advise you to wait until tomorrow. Would you? Yeah. Thanks. Oh, you're yellow, you big fluff, or you go with me. What's that? You know what I said, you're yellow. Why, you dirty little rat, I'll show you. Hey, let me get out of What's the matter with you? Hey, oh, let me get out. Shut your bike, little man, or I'll shut it for you. Well, you go whether you want it or not. I should show you. You be the boss, Mrs. O'Grady. Tell us what to do. I have a better idea. I'll get you children some nice tea. Fine. I hope she has to go to China for that tea. never to carry a gun. I got rid of the gun, didn't I? Why do you keep hopping on it? Well, let him hop on it. I like to think about it. Oh, spare my life, said Mr. Arlington. Spare my life. Oh, you filth, you. Cut it out. 
You bother when you cut it out. I'm sick of it. Yes, and you're going to be a whole lot sicker if I don't do some fast thinking. I don't want to think about it. I want you to go out and leave me alone. Yes, if I left you alone, you'd fry. The both of you'd fry. Did anybody outside of yourself know that the rubies were in the house? I don't think so, sir. Did you... There uh, was an old woman from a bird store who saw the rubies. Oh, yeah? Did you see this old woman? Why, yes, sir. I showed her in. You forget easy, don't you? Well, you guys are going to listen to me from now on, or you won't be here to listen to anybody. What do you expect tomorrow night? Say, can't you realize that? If you don't want a part of this Arlington junk, on account of how we got them, then me and the midge will split them. Sure. You put that stuff back in the safe and you do it right now. Yeah? Yeah. Right now. Well, you don't have to get sore about it. Go ahead, Lord. Put them back. Let's shoot on the square. Oh, good morning. Howdy. Mr. O'Grady in? I think so. I'd like to speak to her, please. All right, I'll tell him. Gentlemen here to see you, Mrs. O'Grady. Oh, just a moment. She'll see you in just a minute. Ready? Yes, sir. I'm from police headquarters. Oh, a detective? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, what you be feeding? Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Hello, Kitty. How are you? Now, I suppose you're going to try and sell me some tickets, aren't you? No, it's not tickets this time. See, you've been reading about the murder. Oh, yeah. And isn't it terrible? You know, Mr. Arlington was one of my very best customers. You was over the Arlington home uh, yesterday afternoon, weren't you? Yeah. I sold him a parrot last week. While you were there, was the man from Cartier's delivering a necklace? Oh, yeah. And it was a beautiful necklace. But the baby wanted to play with him. Will he please? Will he please? While you uh, were looking at the rubies, was the butler in the room? Well, let me see. Let me see. Well, really, I, I can't remember. Well, the reason I ask is that sometimes the smallest things give us a clue. <laughs> yes, of course. I see the Santa Claus has been here all right. Yes, indeed. Gee, that's a cute gadget, isn't it, huh? Is that a cute thing? Whoop! Fall down, huh? <laughs> Gee. Well, I'll say that's a perfect elephant. They didn't have anything like that when I was a kid. No, was of course it? not. My go. Go. My go. Oh, I see. Once she's cow. Go. <laughs> <So. laughs> You want it, son? My girl. All right, get ready. You catch it? All right. There's something inside of it. How does this thing open? Oh, saddle pack and all, huh? <laughs> hey, just a minute, mister. What's the matter? Give this back to the boy. Wow. Oh, you see, my, my uh, son-in-law doesn't like to have the baby tea. My candy. Oh, I see. He wanted his candy. That's what he wanted. 
cash register. <laughs> Say, that's funny. I delivered that parrot myself. Oh, you did, eh? Yeah, I did. You forget easy, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's right. Well, I'll be seeing you later. Dick's got a line on us. We gotta think fast. It looks like he's a spectator. Let's plan the Ubers in his room. That's a hunch. We can't do that. Why not? We might lose the rubies. We might lose the ruby. We might go to the chair. Red beans. Put in little red beans. Train it climbing stone. You sleep it is. No, thanks. Oh, uh, say, this is wonderful. The coffee? Oh, no, no, I mean, just being here with you and having supper and everything. Oh, well, I guess you've never been away from home on Christmas before. Oh, well, it isn't only that. I mean, it would be wonderful to be with you any night. Uh, every night. Uh, that is, uh, every evening. Hector, you're getting very bold. Well, I don't mean to be bold, but... Oh, Rosie, there's no use beating around the bush. You know how I feel. I've... I've been saving up my money and hoping that... Well... Here. Will you take a look at this? Why, well, it's your bank book. Sure. You're a funny bird, Hector. Why, what's the matter? Don't you think it's enough for us to start on? Oh, say. If I loved a man, he wouldn't have to have a dime. If you loved a man. Sure. I see. Well... Oh, why didn't you tell me this before? Why have you let me go on? Oh, I was only kidding you. Oh. Well, I guess I should have known that. Good night, Rosie. Goodbye, Hector. What are you crying for? Oh, I tried so hard to keep you from knowing. Rosie, do you mean you do? Oh, sure I do. Oh. But I'm not the kind of a girl for you. Oh. I've been a crook. 
What? Yes, a cloak and a big pocket. Oh, you don't mean that, do you? You think I'm telling you this for fun? It's the truth. I wasn't brought up on green grass and apple pie and Christmas tree like you was. I've been traveling around since I was 14. <laughs> oh, don't cry like that, honey. Why... Why, I've done some pretty bad things myself when I was young. <laughs> You planned it. Oh, how? Well, I, I've got to go now. Good night, Hector. Good night. <laughs> oh, gee, but you've made this a great Christmas, Rosie. but you made this a great Christmas, Rosie. Ain't you the little kitty? What? Uh, uh, gee, Echo, I ain't kidding. This is on the level. I love him. Thanks. What are you going to do? You'll find out soon enough. Arlington murder arrested. Missing jewels found in prisoner's closet. Hector McDonald disclaims any knowledge regarding the jewels that were found in his room and asserts that at the time of the murder was trimming a Christmas tree at Mrs. O'Grady's bird store. Holy! What's the matter? Oh, what a bonehead I was not to think of that. What? What? Come on, spit it out. What? They'll investigate this. The cops will be here any minute. But when they do, they won't find no Mrs. O'Grady here. What do you mean? We're going to get out of here. Come on. Now, wait a minute. I say that it is going to be Mrs. O'Grady. That cop sold me here. Get out of my way. You guys can get out of your makeup. I can't. You got to stick with me. Get out of my way, I said. Oh. Oh. I hear you. Oh. Get out of here. Now, got this. I'm not going for the chair alone. And neither is Hector McDonald. Now laugh that off, you big stiff. Rosie, what do you mean? What do you think I mean? What are you going to do? You'll find out soon enough. Oh, now, listen, Rosie. Listen, now, you wouldn't do anything that you might be sorry for, kid. Come on. 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 Why you shut up? There's bigger in the other room. But I tell you, I haven't the least idea of how that necklace got into my room. No. No. Well, Regan's gone out. He's on his way to a Grady's bird store. All right. Well, I haven't worn that suit for three days. All right, boys. Bring it out. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get in that car and keep it quiet. She passed out. Keep an eye on her while I get my bag. Where's Echo? Echo, let me see. 
She was a very good friend of yours, wasn't she? Yes. And now both of these good friends have vanished into thin air. Yes, sir. How do you explain that? I can't explain it. Oh, I see. Oh, but they'll come. Rosie will come. She'll get here somehow. I know she will. Mm. Oh, they were there that night. It's true. You've got to believe me. It's true. Uh -huh. Does the defense attorney intend to produce the alleged witnesses, Mrs. O'Grady, her granddaughter and her grandchild? We are making every effort to locate them. Undoubtedly. Just a moment, please. And I am not through with you yet. Oh, I wish I had someone to love me, someone to call me their own. Oh, girls, don't you wish to get married? Oh, will you stop it? I'm tired oh. of living alone. Come on, get back. Get back. My stuff alone. Oh, what's eating here? I was only kidding. I caught he's trying again. Well, what are you crying about now? He's reading about the book's trial. Yo, shut up. <laughs> hey, I want to see you outside. Come on. Those two are getting chummy again. Yeah, so I noticed. I don't trust them. Neither do I. Hodge, what about yes, us two? Dividing that stuff. What do you mean? If you bump one off, you got a button bolt. What's the matter, you yellow? Maybe I got a better plan. <laughs> ah, shut up. You got a nerve crying about him in front of me. It ain't only just for him. It's what you're doing, all of you, letting that poor fella go to the chair for something he didn't do. Ah, uh, he didn't the chair yet. 
And if it goes, well, it's just his tough luck for getting mixed up with a bunch of crooks and pickpockets. <laughs> oh, get him out of it, Echo. You can do it. If you don't, you'll always have his face in front of you. His face. Go and do his death. Well, I'll take a chance. Oh, Echo, please, try to do something. Why? Why, why should I? For me. Do it for me. Yeah, do it for you. Because you're crazy about him, because you want to marry him. I ain't in love with him. I... I just want him to be all right. Yeah. Oh, I liked him, sure, but... But now, if you'll do this, if you'll get him out of it, I'll never see him again. You can have me always. Well, I got you now, and I'm going to keep you. Oh, sure, you can keep me. But what'll it get you? You don't want me that way. Oh, Echo, wouldn't you rather have me liking you, not thinking you were something mean and cold-blooded like Herc and the Midge? Wouldn't you rather have me, have me strong for you, thankful and alive, wanted to be with you? <laughs> That's a great line of chatter, but it don't go with me. Gee, you're a smart guy. You were hot stuff for the nearsighted old ladies in the Paris store. But when it comes to doing something decent, you're afraid to take the chance. You're yellow. Hey, listen, you're trying to pass the buck to me, ain't you? So they'll get me in. You can have him. No, you don't love him. All right. All right. I do love him. I am in love with him. I'll always love him. And if you let him die, I'll hate you. Do you hear me? I'll hate the sight of you. I'll loathe you every time you touch me. I'll be hoping every minute that you're both dead. <gasps> Even take that from you, Echo, if you'll do what I ask. Did I... I mean... <laughs> the utter futility of this attempt at alibi and the positive discovery of the stolen necklace concealed in the room of the accused constitutes, I think, ladies and gentlemen, a plain case for conviction. I didn't know the jewels were there. But you told them that. And I'm going to ask you to find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. Do you think they'll convict him? He'll go to the chair. It's a cinch. Ladies and gentlemen, I have seldom encountered a case where the facts are so simple and so self-evident as they are in this case before us here today. A murder has been committed and some jewelry has been stolen. There is no doubt about the motive for the murder. And there is no doubt that whoever stole those jewels committed that hideous crime. Now the evidence has proved to you that some of those jewels were found in the possession of Hector MacDonald. Hector MacDonald contends he knew nothing about them or how they came into his possession. And his only defense is a vague story about three people who have mysteriously disappeared. Who can they be? Who are they, these three mysterious people? whom have so mysteriously disappeared, and the defense cannot or dare not produce. It is quite obvious, ladies and gentlemen, that they are either accomplices to the crime, or else they are pure figments of imagination. We have heard a great deal today about the fallibility of circumstantial evidence. Our sympathies have been appealed to, a great deal has been said about the accused being a good boy, having gone to church and has a great many respectable friends in his hometown. Such uh, appeals to our sympathies are always made by a clever attorney when uh, there are no solid facts to defend a man accused. Now, for my part, I am very happy to hear that he has a great many respectable friends in his hometown and has always gone to church on Sunday. But I am horrified, as I know that all of you must be, 
when we know that he uses this cloak of respectability to cover up his complicity in robbery and murder. Now, there are only two points for us to remember in this case, ladies and gentlemen, and these points speak more strongly than anything which I may say. John Arlington is dead. He was killed when he tried to protect himself and his property. That is the first fact. And John Arlington's jewels were found in the pocket of Hector McDonald's coat. With these facts clearly before us, gentlemen, it is not necessary for me to remind you of your duty, of the attempt that we are making to grind out ruthlessly under the stern heel of justice the ugly breed of criminals that are threatening the lives and safety of all of us. I shall leave all the emotionalism in this case in the hands of a very able attorney for the defense. Here, look at this. That's Mrs. O'Grady's handwriting, but she isn't here. Where did you get this? Why, in my hand here, on the desk. Well, what are you going to do about it? We've nothing to lose. Your Honor. I beg to ask for a postponement of this case until tomorrow morning Where? to produce new evidence. Preposterous, Your Honor. I object. In a case where a man's life is at stake, we cannot refuse any reasonable request. On what ground? I hope to be able to produce the missing witness, Mrs. O'Grady. I object, Your Honor. I'm beginning to have my doubts that there is such a person as Mrs. O'Grady. Oh, yes, there is, Your Honor. Well, Cease this disorder well, in the court. In order that the defense may produce the missing witness, Mrs. O'Grady, this court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Now, Mrs. O'Grady, what were you doing on Christmas Eve? I was trimming a Christmas tree. Was Hector MacDonald helping you? Yes, he was. And was there anyone else with you trimming the Christmas tree besides Hector MacDonald? Why, yes. My granddaughter, Rosie O'Grady, and, uh, well, we had put the baby to bed. A boy or girl? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, a boy, sir. And how long were you both with Mr. MacDonald? Oh, it was, uh, it was past midnight when we finished. Are you sure of that? Oh, yes, I'm quite positive I heard the clock strike 12 while we were all there. Now that's all. One moment, please. As far as I'm concerned. Oh, Thank dear, you. is there some more? Yes, uh, one or two questions. Now, uh, there is another member of your family uh, who is also hard to locate. This big man, your son, I believe. Oh, my son-in-law, the baby's father. Oh, yes. Now, was he also there that evening trimming the tree? Well, no. Well, was he in bed, too? I think so. You see, I don't put him to bed. <laughs> oh. oh, now you are mourning around again. Why do you act so scared of Mrs. Seco has gone to town? What? I'm not. When did they get back? Say, Rosie, what's the difference when he comes back? But what are you uh, worrying about him for? I'm not worried about him, only... the way you look at me, you and that horrible little midge, you give me the creeps. Yeah, well, no wonder. The midge wanted me to bump you off an echo, then split two ways with him. I don't believe it. I don't believe he could be that rotten. He ain't any rotten than an echo. Neither one of them has got any principles. Now, if you have any sense, you duck with me. You're asking me to run away with you? Yes. I'm crazy about you. While Echo is gone, we have got our chance. We tie up the midge and beat it. Then you and I will split the stock. Oh, be yourself! <laughs>
Mrs. O'Grady, you don't know where your son-in-law is. You don't know where your granddaughter Rosie is. Or your darling baby great-grandchild is, do you? No, sir. But you remember perfectly well every detail of what happened on Christmas Eve four months ago. Yes, sir. You remember trimming the tree. But you don't remember anything else except that you were on some mysterious farm in the country. Yes, sir. In short, Mrs. O'Grady, you don't remember anything else except what you want to remember, do you? Oh, I have such a headache. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. O'Grady, if you have a headache, I... Thank you. I didn't mean to make you nervous. Oh, it's much better now. Thank you. You see, I'm only attempting to drive the truth. Yes, of course. Now, uh, Mrs. O'Grady. <laughs> see, Your Honor? An imposter, an artery. Order, order in the court. What is the meaning of this? Your Honor, I wish to make a full confession. After all, Echo, five years isn't so long. Hey. One to five years. Don't forget that, Rosie. Uh, I'll be out of the old joint before you know it. Oh, sure, with good behavior and everything. Yes, and I'm a good behavior. In it, Rosie? Sure. You better make this snappy. We've only got about a minute. All right, Chief, all right. Well, I just want to tell you that I appreciate what you did. It was a big thing. Oh, that's all right. Forget it, kid, forget it. Oh, no, I'll never forget it. Well, I guess Rosie wants to talk to you now, so I'll say goodbye. Well, goodbye, kid. Good luck. <laughs> I brought you some cigarettes. Oh, swell. Thanks, kid. Well, goodbye, Rosie. Goodbye, Hector. So long. So long. Swell guy, eh? Yeah. Well, Echo, when you do come out, I'll... I'll be waiting for you. What's that? I'll be waiting for you. Rosie, are you on the level? Do you really, you really want me, want me back? Sure. Oh, Rosie. Gee, that's swell. <laughs> well, say, you came through like like I asked you to, and, well, I'll come through, too. A, a bargain, a, a bargain. Yeah. Sure, then. Yeah. Rosie, uh, I can't do that. What do you mean? Well, when a girl waits for a fellow that long, uh, you got to marry him. And, uh, well, uh, well, I, I just don't want another ball and chain, that's all. You mean, you mean you don't want me to wait for you? No. You mean that, Echo? Sure, I mean it. Oh. Oh, gee, Echo. Oh. Oh, you're a great guy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, well, don't get that there. What'd you say? Well, I didn't say nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I don't know whether to, whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> well, why, why don't you do a little of both? You know the old gag. That's all there is to life. Just a little laugh, a little tear. Mm -hmm. oh, goodbye, Rosie. I'll be seeing you. Come on. Hey, you! You better come over and take care of this galley, all right? I'll send you a postal card. <laughs> 